Hi, and welcome to week one of the processing class. The first thing we're going to cover this week is giving you a really strong foundation. Just like this building foundation, if you've got a foundation that's really solid and really in there strong, you can build some amazing things that you might not expect you could have built because the foundation is there to support you. So that's what I'm going to give you this week is the basics of a really strong foundation. And that's going to make everything we do this week and future weeks much easier. Now, the videos this week are going to be organized in the same way that most of the videos are organized every week. If you think of all the information we're going to talk about as a pond, then these videos leap from one lily pad to the next to the next. And we talk about the topics that correspond to those lily pads. But along the way, there are some interesting sidelights and things to talk about that aren't really on the main path. Those are supplementary videos, and you can check them out if you want. So now I'll give you an overview of this week's videos so you know where we're going and how we're going to get there and you'll know what you'll have in your hands by the time we're done with this week. The first batch of things we're going to talk about this week involve getting started. I want you to start, as I said, with a really great foundation. So to that end, I'm going to begin by giving you a tour of about a dozen projects that you can make with processing to show you the kinds of flexibility and tools it offers you. If you've never programmed before, you might find programming to be a little bit weird and unusual for you. So I'm going to give you a step of orientation to help you get your mind in the right place so that programming will make sense. It's really not that hard, but it really helps to come at it with the right attitude. Programming, in fact, is just another medium, just like oils or acrylics or watercolor or sculpture. It's a creative, artistic medium, and if you approach it in a way that plays to its strengths and you work with its strengths, you can create some marvelous things. So I'll talk about how we see programming as a medium. Then it's time to actually dig into processing. So I talk about how to install processing. I talk about how to download it and get it up and running on your computer. And there are two videos for this, one for people on Macs, one for people on PCs. Of course, you can ask those questions of me, you can ask them of your fellow students, but maybe it's two in the morning and you want an answer now. Well, there are tools to help you figure out problems and solve them, and they'll be useful to you now and they'll be useful to you for years to come. So I'll show you where on the web you can go to find tools to help you answer questions. Once you've got processing up and running, we'll talk about the processing window itself. This is the little environment that processing gives you. It has a text editor and a bunch of buttons, and this is where you write your programs and run them. Finally, we will very briefly discuss how to write a program that creates a picture, and this will wrap up the getting started phase of things. You will have processing installed on your computer, up and running, and you'll know where to go for help, and you'll know how to think about things so that the rest of the stuff is easy. There's one supplementary video in this section. I mentioned that there are two videos for installing, one for Macs and one for PCs. All of my videos in this course are shot on a Mac because I have a Mac, but processing is almost identical by design between Macs, PCs, and Linux. There are very minor cosmetic differences. So if you're on a PC, there's an extra video that you can watch that shows you where these minor cosmetic differences are. Once we have all of this in place, we're ready to start talking about pictures. Now, the, one of the most important concepts that we are going to use throughout the class is color. And I'm going to first talk about different color systems. Processing offers you two different ways of describing color. So I'll talk about those. The first is based on the three primaries of light, red, green, blue. And the second is based on a more human-centric way of picking colors called the hue, saturation, brightness system. And we'll talk about both of these. Then I'll talk about how to pick colors, and we'll talk about a couple of color pickers. And I'll talk about the value of transparency. And then finally, I'll talk about a really useful shortcut for creating grays. There are three 
optional videos or supplementary videos in this section. The first one discusses the number 255. <laughs> when we talk about color, you'll see this number comes up over and over again. You just see 255 all over the place. So there's a video that talks about that. There's a video that talks about the hardware of color displays and that will help you understand why processing treats color the way it does. And then finally, I'll talk about color blending. It turns out there are two different ways you can blend colors within processing, and you actually get two different kinds of results. And they're both fine, but they're different. And so I discuss those. Once we have color under our belt, we're ready to dig into graphics. The first thing we'll talk about is how to tell processing where things are located. And that's called giving it a pair of coordinates. It's really the same thing as just reading a map. Once we have that, we can talk about the styles that we want processing to use. And we'll cover a whole bunch of different kinds of drawing styles that we can use to draw the shapes so that they look any way we want. Then we'll talk about the actual shapes themselves. Processing offers us lots of different possible shapes. We're going to cover three of the basics. First, lines, and you can draw a line anywhere you want. Second, rectangles of any size and shape, including squares, and then ellipses. Again, any size and shape, including circles. There's one optional video here. When you draw a thick line, processing can treat the ends in different ways. Here, they're rounded out. So there is an optional video that talks about the different end styles that you can put on thick lines. Well, this wraps up the basics. We've got processing installed and running. We've got an understanding of how to describe colors and we can draw graphics. Well, that's everything we need to make a picture. So I show you an example where I start with a little picture that I draw on paper with pencil and we actually turn it into a processing program. Then we have the bookend to this video, a recap where we talk about all the stuff we've learned and then comes the really good part where I give you some homework so that you can take these ideas and put them into action yourself. Remember, you can always pause and rewind the videos as much as you want, but I'm going to keep things moving. So strap in and we're going to get started.